We're gonna be throwing a few things back and forth instead of hitting just one topic. So if you think about what we've done in the short amount of time and between the two of us, if we split up all the stuff that we've seen, there's a lot to go over, which is why we're just gonna put this all into one episode. Nathan, not only welcome to the California Republic, what used to be your home, but welcome to my new cigar lounge. This place is fantastic. It's, when I think cigar lounge, I think of this type of layout with, with the chairs, with the stained glass, with everything that's here. This is one of my favorite places that you've so brought me to. This is the Blue Flame Cigar Lounge in Torrance. And not only is it a cigar lounge, the owners have a unique alternate career, which we'll share towards the end of this episode. Okay. So what are we doing today? What are we discussing today in this episode of Members Only? Well, we're going to go crazy with Germans. For the most is part. it only Germans? I don't think we're it's, covering just Germans. Not just Germans. So we're going to start with something that you attended in my hometown. What was that? The Volkswagen ID7. Now, yeah. what is the ID7? The ID7 is their new premier electric vehicle. It's a sedan, but it's a hatch sedan. I love that. I think yes. that was a smart, shrewd move. I agree. I'm not 100% sure on the sedan part. Right now, we're talking about a vehicle that will get between, say, in the low 300s, possibly in the mid 300s, because there's two separate batteries. So there's a 91 kilowatt hour battery. That's the big one. Technically 87. The car is about the size of an Ionic 6, maybe a little bit bigger, but the battery is significantly bigger. Yes. The battery on an Ionic 6 and an Ionic 5, 77.4 kilowatt hours. So you're talking about 10 kilowatt hours more in the mm. battery. So that's a big deal. Now, a huge point. Tell the audience, how tall are you? I'm 6'1". When I wear big shoes, I'm almost 6'2". Can you fit in that car? Yes. Can you fit in an Ionic 6? Not in the back. In the back of this? In the, the back ID7? of this, yes. Like, comfortably? Comfortably. Then you made a huge stink about the UX. I have been very clear about the UX on new Volkswagens. It is the worst I've ever seen in my life. It needs to be thrown in the trash and they need to start from scratch. Which is what they did. I, what I saw was not a start from scratch. It was a mild refresh. Do you think it's a refresh? Okay. Well, they, they swear up and down that it's an all new system. Because it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They, they, they have to. Look, I, I, I'm going to reserve judgment until I drive it. Mm. until I'm actually actively using the system. Um, I, I can't stand static machines where I'm making you know, judgments. The only thing I can really judge is layout, comfort, looks. But you were fooling around with some of the UX bits and you, mm -hmm. you, you specifically pointed out that the, um, I think it was the, all the HVAC stuff is now lit and it's, stays. That's what I dislike so much because it doesn't have haptic feedback in it. So when you're playing with it, going with your heater up and down, you're not getting any, you know, as you're driving, you're not getting any feel for what you're doing. That's the same thing as the ID4. That's the same thing. Garbage. As, yeah, that, that part I really just There's not enough uh, hard buttons. And the hard buttons they have, they have these ridiculous things like where they share the window switches with the front and the back. So on the driver's door, there's only two window switches. You've got to do this toggle to go. It's just utterly ridiculous. Well, God forbid the Germans not make something more complex like they do all the time. But in this case, I honestly think there was like, you know how there's like a, there's like a, a, a climate czar in every company nowadays? <laughs> yes. You know, whether you like it or not. Now I think at a place like Volkswagen, there is a complexity czar. And he went to the ID4 and said, this is not complex enough. Let's take the window switch out. I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. And I think that they've had that czar at BMW for a few years too, my friend. All right, now, this is where you and I disagree. I would argue the UX in BMWs now the UX is, is the gold standard. But Taking them 20 years to get there. Go back up a few years. Terrible. And I'm not even talking about the UX, turn signals on the BMW. Why was it necessary for BMW and Mini, which I own, yeah. to have a turn signal that's more complex to use than a simple click, click turn signal? Why does it have to return to center and then be, you have to hit it in order to stop it? Why do you have to mess with this thing so much? There's no reason for that complexity. I love you, but I think you have too much time in your hands. Wrong. So going back to the ID7, I think they should have led with this. Actually, I think they should have led with the ID Buzz. 
their van. That would have been something different. I agree. That should have been here first. And it, it, there's, if I were part of Volkswagen management, I'd be firing whoever didn't. Well, you make can that see happen. why they did it. They went that route because what sells are SUVs, which, if, if we're looking at something on the opposite end of that spectrum, you know, I love the way the Lucid looks, I love the way it drives, terrible UX, but love the way it drives. But they made the mistake of winning, going sedan. Even though I prefer sedans, that's why they only sold. I think 7,000 last year, they would have sold when their a lot targets more. were 50,000 for yeah, the year. Yeah, they would have sold a lot more if they just lifted it up and put yeah. a larger body on it. And they're co- it, you, we're going to see it next couple of months. Yes. Interesting, I don't know about in Denver, but around here I'm starting to see a ton of Lucids now, which is good. I'm really happy for Derek. What are three takeaways from the ID7 uh, launch? Okay. Well, they're pushing hard for range, so they're, they're trying to fight back with the Koreans. Essentially, what, in my mind, the ID7 is a direct competitor to the Ionic 6, direct. They're very similar in size and mm. packaging. They, they, they have some similarities. Uh, range, I think, I, I don't know yet with the Volkswagen for sure what they're gonna get with a single motor, which mm-hmm. is uh, 210 watt. And single motors, rear drive. Rear drive, mm-hmm. right. But they are gonna introduce an all wheel drive one mm-hmm. as well. And it will be direct competition. So if you want a somewhat affordable sedan that has incredible range, you now have two choices. And we know that the Ionic 6 is well made. They did a good job with it. But I think that Volkswagen is using that as a benchmark. So I'm going to push you a little bit here. By the way, you technically you'd have three choices because you could get a Model 3, but different kind of vehicle. Yeah, which we have at TFL. Um, you, uh, if I had to push you right now, make a decision. Ionic 6. Why? Because I've driven the Ionic 5. And other than I don't like the um, gear select, but they yeah. have gear, it's not technically gear, but you know, <clears throat> the gear lever button switch thingy, it's just weird. Everything else about that car I like. I love the Ionic 5. So knowing that the Ionic 6 with its better range. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let's switch gears. While you were in my hometown checking out Volkswagens, <laughs> I was here for the launch of the new GLC. Mm-hmm. Um, the GLC, I don't know when I'm putting this out, so I don't know how much I can tell you, but the new GLC, uh, I would argue the old GLC was the gold standard in that segment. In like that segment. A, a mid-size, smaller mid-size, luxury or near luxury crossover. That you can almost afford. Uh, yeah, the, the, the previous one had a base price of $43,000. Exactly, which is not bad. When you think about the base price of an Ionic 5 is $45,000. We're talking about now, especially, let's take into account that the average price of a new car in the U.S. is $47,000. Mm-hmm. So this is actually below the average price of a car, and the car you get for forty-three grand is not a pile of crap. It actually has a sunroof. It's got um, the whole new Mercedes-Benz UX, which we can talk about. It's got the power lift gate. So it's got some stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the thing about it, they're doing something very different than they do with the EQs. Everybody that I speak to and I see in the, the comments, no one likes the design of the EQs. And I, I really can't with argue with them. I can't argue with them. This one, it's what Mercedes used to do. It's a very evolutionary change. A matter of fact, I've got a very good friend of mine, and he'll love this. I, uh, the two recent episodes, I threw two friends of mine under the bus. Uh-huh. One of them, my friend Steve Stavros, um, his wife's got a GLC, and then my other friend Brian... He drives a, a Range Rover Sport. So I threw him under the bus in that episode. Yeah, That's what we drove here today. And I, I looked at the car throughout the episode from my friend's wife's eyes. And I got to tell you, it's still the gold standard. I don't want to talk about how it drives because I may want to put this out before the, yeah. uh, before the embargo. But in terms of tactile feel, build quality, the perception of what the car is... Uh, I think the way I think it looks actually a little bit sharper than the car places, but it still looks the same. Well said. And around that time, uh, if you back up just a little bit during the New York Auto Show, yeah. Normally I go out to Moab, Utah, and cover the Easter Jeep Safari, but Roman sent me out to cover Mercedes. I thought that was a very strange uh, move. I, why yeah. would he send you to Mercedes? <laughs> why send me? Yeah. Why we were so so yeah. the, the the audience probably knows. Andre and I were the ones that had to pitch hit New York for you guys because you two were fooling around. And so Andre and I are in the basement of the Javits Center looking at like old JDM cars and we're both looking at each other like, why the hell is Nathan driving a Maybach and we're in the basement of a convention center? 
Yeah, that... Um, we were pissed. I'm sorry. It wasn't my choice. I'm not usually the guy who covers the high-end cars. This is... Well, I like to cover the lower-end cars and off-road vehicles. That's sort of my deal. It's my thing. I like representing the people who need an inexpensive ride. You're but a man of the people. That's I exactly am a man. I want. am. I am. But Mercedes brought me out. First flew me out to Atlanta to drive the new, if you want to call it that, GLE. And also I got to look at their new GLS, which is one of my favorites, one of your favorites. You drove the hybrid GLE, not yes. the S. Yeah, yeah. And what are three things that have changed? What do they change mm. on these cars? So the biggest change that you would notice is that the headlights and the taillights, they're new. So they have a different shape to them, obviously LED. And then they took the grill and they added um, kind of a darker chrome feature to it and changed the shape of the grill a little bit. So that's on the outside. Inside... Is that on the GLE as well? Yes. And inside, all the buttons, which by the way, thank you Mercedes for actually having toggle switches. Oh, the toggle oh, switches are badass. Love them. Love them. Please em. put that on. You know what? Finish this and then we're going to switch to another Mercedes. Okay. Well, talk anyway, that. The, the, that in itself and the, and the feel of the controls and the clicky ability of everything, it's just, it, it oozes high-end mentality that you're buying something with quality. I would argue more so than the car we're going to talk about now, more so than the Maybach. Mm. While you were in, where the hell were you? You went somewhere. I forgot where you went. Anyway, I went to Portugal. Yeah, when you... Oh, yeah, and I drove the so new uh, EQE SUV, which was actually quite a nice car to drive if you want a softly sprung car. I would argue it's more of a, of a Lexus from your. Not a Lexus like today. It's... It, it's it's very comfortable. It's like it's like a modern day Cadillac. Mm. It wafts you along a, a bit. Yeah, there's a sport mode which cleans it up a little bit, but it's still on the side of more compliance than it is composure. And then while we were there, there was the they they got they gave us early access to the Maybach EQS 680 SUV prior to its its reveal at the Shanghai Auto Fair, and. Um, couple things they saw my episode and I was very honest in that episode I'll be a little bit more honest here mm -hmm. um, I think it's incredibly gaudy I don't understand why anybody would buy it but then again I'm not a Maybach guy I don't need the two-tone I don't need the fancy grill but I do love the stand-up star and laurel I love that love it love it love it I love the one they showed us had the monoblocks mm-hmm the interior 22 was, inch, right? Uh, t uh, 22s on the ones that in my episode, they are toying with the idea of doing a 23. Jeez. I don't think that's a great idea, especially the car we're driving right now. This Land Rover Sport, yeah. first edition, has got 23s. It ruins the ride quest. It's terrible. Terrible yeah, to I, drive. Bigger wheels never do it for me. Uh, the heavier. On uh, a big rollers. car like that, 22s are fine. But 23 is too much. Yeah. So on this, I, I'm going to give you two things where I think they missed the boat. Number one, Maybach is all about, like we were talking about, the bigger doors in the back and the, what's it like to sit in the back of the car. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. I mean, in the back, it's got the seats like it does in the S580. It's stunning back there. Right. The, the tactile feel, the build quality is they knocked it out of the park. Really great. But they, in order to put a bigger delta between this and the EQS 580, which Roman and I drove in Colorado, right. um, the wheelbase is the same. In an S-Class Maybach, the wheelbase is 10, no, it's 126 to 132, so it's 6 inches longer wheelbase, 10 inches longer length. I think the first missed opportunity is they should have made the wheelbase longer to give even more space in the back, because you don't really have to worry about packaging. People aren't talking about putting skis and things in the back of a Maybach. Gotcha. The second missed opportunity is it's got just like the EQS 580 SUV it's based on, it has that same hyper screen, which is cool to look. It's not as bad as the Volkswagen where you need to throw it in the trash and start from <laughs> scratch. They just need three knobs to do, be like uh, multiple functions, so like fan and then volume and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But in the Maybach, they needed to go in a different direction. What they need to do is they need to at least have the option of having an old-timey, like, Bentley-esque... Uh, 
analog dashboard. Yeah, screen in the center, mm -hmm. but I want a big, chunky, knurled knob, and I want IWC gauges. I say IWC because Mercedes has a relationship with IWC, yeah. but a, a, someone in the comments said uh, Jaeger, which would be great because they did the, 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 the gauges for all the British cars for right. God knows how many years. I am convinced that if they offer that, even as an option, let's say it's $50,000 option, it'd be 100% take rate. Really? Those are the two missed opportunities with, with the Maybach. I can see that with Lexus. And Lexus is going to really digital now. And remember in the old days, they had one of the coolest analog gauges I've ever seen on their uh, IS. My Those car are, has that. Yeah, that's right. I okay. love that. that. Isn't that cool? That, I'm a sucker for every, And I'm afraid every time I get in the car, mm -hmm. I, you, know, you know me, I'm like OCD. I get in the car, and the first thing I do is I press that button and have the thing go off to the side. It's, I love that. That is James Bond awesome. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. My nephews, what, they're 13 years old and nine years they think that's the best. That, well, and, and rightfully so. Yeah. That's, so it proves that I have the mentality of a nine year old. Well, that, don't we both? Got to also remember the Koreans are playing a game where they're forcing even my box to up their game with interior. You think so? Even yeah, that far up? I do. Really? I, with After my time spent with. Um, it was GB70 and then the 90 with the G90 in the back. I was really impressed with what they did. You're getting old and soft in your age. I actually. am soft. Uh, but I, think, I really do think that because you have so much value tied into so much luxury, that people are just like, okay, what can you do to make it more interesting now? Now that we have this car, yeah. which is 90 grand or whatever, yeah. for, to give you so much and so much yeah. luxury. If I'm paying 250000 or more yeah. for this incredible car, why is it only one step above this? It should be three or four steps above it. Well, so we're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, that, but that's my point. I'm thinking the extra wheelbase and the gauges you're saying, all of it. Yes, the it whole all package. comes together. But is, is there a point where it gets too gaudy? Because mm -hmm. I think it's too gaudy. I, from the outside, it is. I can't stand looking at them. Like, I, I would have to wear, I, I'm not a big mask guy, but I would have to wear a mask because I don't want people to see me. It's... If you were, you know... Uh, and don't get me wrong, I love Mercedes. Yeah. If you're a footballer, that's the right car for you. If you are somebody who works in the music industry and you want to be noticed, yet you don't want to drive something British or whatever, maybe that's it. Although, ironically, if you're driving something British, most likely it's German. So this is going to segue our conversation into New York Auto Show. And before yeah. we do that, I do want to respond to your G90. Mm -hmm. From a design point of view, beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel they missed two things on that car. Number one, uh, they have the wrong engine in there. They either should yes. have went 100% electric or they should have went with a high feature, like fantastic V8. Which they could build. That V6 is like, is, is like a vacuum cleaner. I hate it. It's terrible. Yeah. And then the dash, I think that they, that they got on a contract basis, the complexities are from Volkswagen, to come over and say, how can we add more complexity to this thing? And, and just in a design, like the, the UX is fine. It's the design is just like, well, let's put a line here. We don't need it, but let's put a line here. Yeah. It's a rare miss for Genesis. The 90 is not my favorite car of theirs. Not at all, actually. I, I, I really do like the smaller vehicles, yeah. especially GB70. Can you fit in that? Yeah. Not in the back. In the back, well. yeah. No, I mean. So while we're on the top of Koreans, so I, I, I'm, I'm a shameless plug here. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very fortunate opportunity in New York. I got to sit with Sang Yip Lee, who heads, I mean, this is the boss, like the boss boss. Mm -hmm. He heads Hyundai and Genesis Design. Super talented designer. He's, his sketch became the Gen 5 Camaro. He did, he was on a team that did the uh, 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 Gen 6 Corvette. His sketch became the current Flying Spur and Continental. So you can kind of see why Genesis looked the way they do. Oh, hell yeah. And he's just, he brutally honest guy and we shot a great interview and let me tell you he pulled no punches really i do have to apologize and I have to ask for a favor in advance when you guys see that episode please do not beat me up about the lighting or the quality of the video because they moved me last minute from one i spent 30 minutes setting up the lighting and everything and last minute say so you got to go to another conference room and it was the same damn conference room just one down and i this was two minutes before saying Yip was walking in the room. The episode, his interview is great, but the video doesn't look good. Please, oh, please, oh, please, do not beat me up about this. Just watch and listen to the man. It was an amazing interview. 
anyway, um, watch that when it comes out. It comes out on May 13th. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of the EV9? The exterior design, I love it. You like the wheels? Mm, there's two different sets. Yeah. So there's one set that's sort of a star. Yeah. And I'm somewhat partial to that for unusual reasons. Yeah. But the other one, the, the blocky one, I don't like very much. I am convinced the wheel choices are directly lifted from the late 80s Pontiac. <laughs> Interesting. Am I wrong? No, actually, I, I can totally picture what you're saying, too, because I can picture those. They had both hubcaps and wheels that had that type of design. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even think about that. Specifically the 89 Bonneville. Yep. The SSEI or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. I almost, every single one of those I saw was red. So you're a fan of the design. I like the design. I think that, now they changed the rear door uh, from the concept to, because it used to have like a clamshell rear door or a suicide yeah. opening rear door. Now it's just conventional, which makes total sense. It's a long door. It's a very long door. It's seven inches longer in wheelbase than the Telluride, and the seven inches are specifically behind the second row. So when you get out of the third row, there's plenty, even you could get in and out of the third. You can't sit back there. But you can get it in and out. Uh, Andre got a chance to really get a good look at it. Yeah. And um, Although, shameless plug, look at your episode, look at mine. I have nobody in my episode. Yeah. I pulled off a magic trick. You did it. Did you wait until the end? No, I didn't, actually. It was the middle of, a, of the second press day. Let's you, just say I, I made people an offer they couldn't refuse. You hired a bunch of guys, big guys from Brooklyn, to come out there and stand in the way. I had Luca Brasi saying, either, either your signature or your brain's going to be on that contract. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, um, I, I do like what they... They're on fire. Overall. Oh, absolutely. Hyundai, Kia, Genesis. Absolutely are hitting it out of the park. We, I've said this before. You've said this before. Um, they're the one to watch. Really, their only, their only flaw is the way they have their dealership set up. Which oh, is especially around. Kia. Yeah, it's, Kia's dealership is still in the trash. All of them, and I own a Hyundai product. Yeah. And I can tell you I'm rather dissatisfied with the way they have certain things set up. Again, I'm going to push you. Okay. If I were to tell you that the EV9, the one you described, is going to be seventy grand, is that going to sell? Yeah, without a doubt. Because Even with a Kia badge on it. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because you're already selling vehicles in that class that are internal combustion for nearly that price. Yeah, but I can get an X7 for high 70s. Yeah. An X7. Do you plug in an X7? No. People in LA do. They plug in whatever they can find because this is the biggest market right here where we're sitting. And it will sell those things like hotcakes right here. Even at 70 grand. Three row SUV? Absolutely. I'm going to give you an anecdote. Okay. And it might change your mind. You and I live and die on search traffic. We do. And before I go on any of these drives, the first thing I do is I look for the natural search traffic. Because everything I do is natural. I don't pay for any views, which a lot of people in our industry pay for views. Oh, in more ways than one. Exactly. So just know that myself... TFL and I think a handful of others do not pay for any. Everything you see is organic views. Yes. So like when, 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 when Roman goes and he shoots the XB7 and gets a million views from walking around with his iPhone for 10 minutes, that was organic. Yep. The organic search traffic on the vehicle is very low. I'm on not the surprised. Kia Stinger, off the charts. Yeah, and where's the this? Stinger going? Going away. Cool, bye-bye. I cannot base a vehicle's future on current search traffic when it is something that's convoluted with the name. Kia's naming is an issue. Not many people who are regular Joes who don't drive vehicles very often, they don't understand what it is. They've seen it. Mm. They, they're like, oh, Kia's built something that looks really cool and it's an electric car. Yeah. They don't know what it is. In time, when those things are on the road, when we're testing them, I guarantee you, you're going to see a massive uptick in search traffic. It will be popular. I, um, I have a different view on this. So I would argue that the EV9 is being introduced into a world that's very different than the Stinger, and that's no reference to a virus. Mm -hmm. It's in 2017, was fall 2017 when I drove that Stinger. Back then, Kias were only for credit criminals. They had some good stuff, but 
only for credit criminals. Yeah. Now we're on the other side of the hill where the people in my neighborhood traded in their Q7s for Tellurides. And now you can have a serious conversation at a cocktail party and say, I'm going to go look at the Telluride tomorrow. What do you think? No one's going to laugh you out of the room. Mm -hmm. That helps the EV9, which surprises me that the search traffic is so low. I, I really do think it's timing because it's still an unfamiliar quantity. They introduced the, the Ionic 6. Now, bear in mind, this is the same company, essentially. And all of their efforts were focused on that car. Mm. All of us drove that car. All of their advertisements are about that car. Everything is there. It's sort of convoluted, but you know it is what it is in terms of that vehicle. Now that that is out there, mm. they're going to progressively move that over. Mm. And once they get a little bit closer to production, I guarantee you that you're going to see more Kia EV9 on the internet, on TV, on billboards. And that is where your search traffic is suddenly going to peak and it's going to happen very quickly. Okay, so this is an area where it's rare that you and I disagree, but this is the area we're going to disagree. And I think this is where we turn the episode around to the audience. What do you think? I agree 100%. So this is the question I think we should pose then. Is Nathan right? Will the natural search traffic, which means translating to people actually buying cars, because natural search traffic means there is pent-up demand for whatever the thing is, that's being searched. It could be a car, it could be a restaurant, it could be an airline. Or am I right? Meaning the natural search traffic is low. Is that a, a, a prediction of it's either too much money or I'm not willing to buy a three row EV SUV or something other reason that's, that's driving the search traffic down? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media. Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word. And then we do have to come back to the beginning of this conversation. What do Nancy and Lyman, who own this lovely establishment, what is their career that, that they, well, Nancy still works. Lyman is technically retired and this is his retirement. What do they do? Can I, can I say? Because I, I know what one of them does. Well, you can say it, yeah. Yeah, uh, he is a former uh, Los Angeles Police Department detective, I think. For homicide. Homicide. And his wife, SVU. So I have the real law and order at my cigar lounge. How cool is that? It's really cool. I know the cool thing. <laughs> it's if, really cool. If you guys are cigar folks, even if you're not cigar folks, just come in and see Nancy and Lyman at Blue Flame in Torrance. They are fantastic folks, and they're car folks. I won't mm -hmm. tell you what cars they have, but they got some cool stuff. And Nancy's a car guy as well. Yeah. So definitely come by and say hello to them, tell them we sent you. Uh, and how can they find you? AllTFL.com or TFL, TFL Car, TFL Bike, TFL Truck, TFL Now, TFL Talk, TFL EV, I'm almost there. Uh, TFL Now, did I already say that? And there's, oh, and TFL Classics. And TFL Nathan. <laughs> I'm gonna change Now my you're name. just showing off. Actually, speaking of showing off, tell them what you're smoking. Oh, this is incredible. So, um, they were nice enough to bring me in here, and this is, well, it's a Winston Churchill, but it's called the Late Hour. The Davidoff Late Hour. That is a unicorn, my friend. This is absolutely delicious. And I normally am someone for a lighter wrapper and a little bit more of a mild taste, but this thing has been just going down super and I'm drinking coffee with it because I'm unsophisticated. But nonetheless, absolutely fantastic cigar. So Nancy and Lyman, thank you for thank you. Uh, the best. This is actually the members lounge they've given us. Uh, so thank you for the time back here and uh, for your friendship. And uh, I look forward to hearing what the audience has to say about our, our disagreement, which is rare for us. It is rare, but nonetheless, I'm right, so. No. <laughs> look yeah. at how he parts his hair. He's definitely wrong. Until we see you in the next episode, bis später.